Hey, what's up guys? BB Bear 4812 coming at you one more time with problem 1383 today. Maximum performance of a team which is being asked by DoorDash. Now, uh, in this problem, we are given N engineers. Uh, they're numbered from 1 to N, and with those engineers, we get two arrays, one representing each uh, engineer's speed and the other representing their efficiency. Now, this team of engineers performs under the, the old adage which goes that you're only as strong as your weakest link. In, in this context, that we uh, that weakest link would be the lowest efficiency. And so we want to return the maximum performance of this team, where we define performance as the sum right over here. So as an example, as the sum of all the speeds of this group of engineers times the minimum of their efficiency. And, and there's a restriction in that the team will be composed of at most K engineers, K being any number between one and N. And, and like I said, we need to return the for, for a team of up to size K, what is their what is their maximum performance? Uh, in this example where we have six engineers and we need to pick out a team of two, the, the maximum you can get is if you use engineers with speed 10 and 5. So right here, 10 and 5. Oops, 10 and 5. And so you sum their speeds, which is, is going to give us 15, times the minimum of their efficiencies, which are 4 and 7 here respectively. Maybe if I... Bit more space. Uh, so indices one and and four. Uh, the minimum of those is four. So fifteen by four would give us sixty. You can repeat the same example here below for. Sorry, the sun is just starting to come out. Uh, you can repeat the same example below for same numbers, but but k is three. You can get an output of sixty-eight. Now, uh, and by the way, this was a, another user uh, recommended problem. So my contacts down below, as always, if you have any requests yourself on what you'd like to see solved next. Few ways to approach this problem. Uh, I, I've taken the actually. So even before I jump into that, uh, I, I did borrow some uh, some thinking here from Lee two one five. I'm sure a lot of you know if you've been on Lee code for a while. Uh, it provides a good solution here, so I took some of that as inspiration, um, giving credit where it's due. Now the a couple ways to think about this problem. I've, I've copied the um, the speed and efficiency over from from the last problem, or from the example, excuse me, and. And one way to think about this is if really let's take the brute force approach. And the brute force approach would say uh, calculate every possible team efficiency from um, from one to k, from teams of size one to k, and and keep track of what the the maximum is along that path and output that in the end. Uh, this would be pretty infeasible because we'd end up with a, I believe an exponential runtime. So it would take quite a while um, as we're as we're going through these combinations. And 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 one thing in particular that. That is a bit tedious to keep track of, uh, in my opinion, would be the efficiency. And, and in particular, like as we're going through and we're adding up potential groups of, of speeds, of total speeds, we, we need to make sure that uh, we're, we're only, like we're, we're, we're limited. Our bottleneck is what that maximum efficiency is going to be. And so wouldn't it be nice if there was a way for me to determine at any given efficiency what the maximum total possible speed could be? Okay, so the way we want to frame this problem in our minds to, able to, to be able to answer it as efficiently as possible is to say at any given efficiency, what is the maximum total speed that I can have? And I think that's that's what's going to get us over the line. So if um, what, what I've done here ahead of time is I, I've actually, I, I've done a tiny bit of work and, and, and what I've done is I've, I, I've kind of sorted I've sorted these two arrays and I've sorted them by efficiency. Um, now I did so in a decreasing order. You may be able to do it increasingly as well, but if we think about why something like this would be beneficial, um, let me let me kind of walk through one step at a time. So the I'm, I'm kind of combining these two arrays into one where I'm saying the, the engineer with efficiency nine has speed of one, and, and I'm putting that as the first item in the array, meaning that it has the top efficiency. The reason I'm doing this is if we now compare it to the second element, well, if I go with an with a potential efficiency of, of nine, this efficiency of nine is only going to be able to be applied to all the speeds for which there is an efficiency greater than or equal to nine. Meaning that for me to have a, a multiple of nine, we're not the multiple being the, the efficiency, for me to be able to use it, I can only use speeds, um, in this case, only use speed one. And so if I now consider my, my next efficiency, my next lowest one, which is seven, I know that I could take, I could have a total performance that's equal to my efficiency of seven times the maximum possible sum of all the items before it, okay? All the items before and limited up to K items. So if our K is two in this case, um, 
I could use five plus one would give me six times uh, times seven would be 42. Fine, we continue. I add the next element and that would be five and two. Now, if I have an efficiency of five, like I do right here, the maximum performance I could get at an efficiency of five is the total sum of all the speeds preceding the five up to a certain amount k. And so now we think to ourselves, okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of adding these items as they go and I, I think this part about the efficiency makes sense now, but how do I keep track efficiently of the maximum or of the total sum of everything preceding my current item up to a certain number k? So that's where we have to think about introducing a new, um, a, a new data structure. And, and in this case, the, the best data structure to use would be a heap. So why a heap? Let's say that I get to this point over here and I've got an efficiency of four. The best I could do so far, and you know, I'll, I'll keep a global uh, variable here, like a, a result variable, and, and at every step along the way, I'll compare the result to you know, what it used to be and what it could be now, and we'll, we'll update it as we go. I think that part's a bit more trivial. You'll see that in the code. But let's say I get to this point here and I've got an efficiency of four. If my k is two or my k is three, um, I want to keep only the most, uh, the largest two or three numbers between 10, 2, 5, and, and 1. So how do I do that? How do I keep the maximum possible number? Well, if I keep a heap of maximum size k, then I'm always going to keep the uh, the, the largest numbers on there, right? Because I'm, I'm going to want to, to always add these things to, so, 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 sorry, I'm not making any sense there. The numbers I'm going to want to add to the heap are, are going to be numbers that are going to give me the maximum possible sum. If I ever get too many numbers, so maybe I, I've got a heap of size three, once I add this 10 in, what am I going to want to do? Well, I'm going to want to make sure that the sum of all my of all my speeds is going to be the maximum possible sum, being you know, 10, five, and, and two. Uh, and so you could do this by implementing a, a max heap. We're actually going to do it with a with a min heap by default, and then what we'll do is we'll, we'll Keep our total speed, and we'll we'll take out the the smallest number from that min heap, and we can walk through an example. I'll show you what I mean um, when I when I say that. And I let me. Oh, I think I, I've lost my progress here, so maybe I'll I'll, I'll finish writing this one in manually here. Uh, my final elements here are three and three. Uh, please don't tell me I'm gonna have that issue like last time. Three and three, and and then two and eight. Okay, so what am I gonna do with this? Well. As I said, we're going to begin by putting these together and sorting this. So this, this whole operation is going to cost me O of n log n time, which will be in the end what our final time complexity will be, as this will be our most taxing operation. I'm going to put these items together and I'm going to sort them in descending order by efficiency. I'm going to create some sort of heap and I'm going to keep track of my total speed. So I'm going to say my total speed is, is equal to zero. Um, I'm going to keep some sort of result is equal to zero. And, and the other thing is we're going to have a heap. So maybe I'll... I'm going to bring this down now because we don't really need the two items anymore. Um, I'm going to keep some sort of a heap and I'll, I'll, I'll keep a visual of that heap and what it looks like. I'm going to begin now by iterating here and, and maybe we'll, we'll do an example here where k equals 2. Okay, we'll do an example where k equals 2. Uh, I think that'll be easier to, easier to track. And I don't know why it's doing this. So I had this problem last time and when I do these on my own, I never have this issue, but some reason... Once I start recording, there we go. K is going to equal two. All right, so I'm going to begin here and with this first element, and I'm, I'm going to say my total speed is equal to one. I'm going to add one to my total speed, and my result is is going to be updated. So my result is going to be the maximum of whatever the result was, and my my latest possible total speed times my current efficiency. Okay, my current efficiency is nine. Um, result was zero, so the maximum between zero and my total speed times my efficiency would give me nine. The best I can do so far is a nine. My heap is going to keep the element uh, nine here, right? Uh, sorry, no, the total sum. I mean, I'm keeping total sums here, uh, or excuse me, I'm, I'm keeping my individual sums here, so my, my heap is going to begin with a one. Fine. We iterate on to the next item. Here, my I have a five and my total sum is going to be six. Five plus one is going to give me six. So I'm going to be at a sum of six. And, and since my heap can keep up to two items because K is two, I'm just going to add that to the heap here. So I'm going to have one and five, meaning that, um, so we're, we're kind of up to K. So maybe in the in the next step, I'll, I'll show you what we do when we, when we bleed over that maximum size. But so far, I've got a, um, my total speed is six. My efficiency now is seven. It's not nine anymore, right? I'm only as strong as my weakest link. Seven times uh, six would give me 42. And so our, our newest result is going to be 42. 
Now I take on my next step over here. All right, so I need to be careful about what I do here. Between these three items, these first three, my maximum possible speed is going to be seven, okay? Now, how am I going to get to seven? The way I'm gonna get to seven is this, is I'm gonna take the speed, I'm gonna add it to my total speed. Actually, let me do this. My total speed now would be eight, okay? However, I noticed that my heap is already of size two. I wanna keep this as a min heap, meaning that, and for the reason I wanna keep it as a min heap is because this smallest number is going to be the lowest speed that I've had so far. If this lowest speed is one, which it is here, I wanna pop that one off, reduce it from my total speed, so get it to seven, and then update this to reflect the speeds that I'm using. So I'm using a two and a five. My total speed is seven. My efficiency at this point is five. Seven by five gives me 30, so I'm not going to update my result. I would have done better having speed one plus five times efficiency seven, as opposed to five plus two times efficiency uh, five, right? 42 is greater than 35. I'll do one more step and then I think you guys get the drill. I have an efficiency of four now and a speed of 10. I'm going to add to my total speed, I'm going to add 10, that'll get me to 17. Once I check my, my heap here, I'll notice that five is the small, or two is the smallest number, excuse me. So I'm gonna remove that from my total speed. I'm no longer going to use it. This heap now will become, since it's a min heap, five will go here and, and 10 will go here. Reason being, I'm now going to choose from all these elements I've seen so far. My two biggest speeds are five and 10, which give me 15, okay? My total speed is going to be 15 here, not five. 15 times an efficiency of four, the four that I'm at right now is 60. 60 is greater than 42. So we will make this a 60. You can keep walking through the rest of the example manually and, and see it for yourself, but that's the logic of, of, of how we're going to approach this. So I, if, it's, if it's confusing, watch it over one more time. Uh, try to check out the code, which we'll go through now because I, I think the code may clarify it a bit. Now, uh, one thing we can do, since we will be working with a heap, you don't need to do this, uh, but just to keep things clear, I'm gonna say from heap Q import, we're gonna use heap five, we're gonna use heap push, and we're gonna use heap pop, okay? Again, you can use heap Q as you go through the code, but maybe if we import it at the top, it'll be a tiny bit cleaner. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create this heap and I'm going to heapify it, meaning I'm just gonna take a, a list and, and turn it into a, a heap. I think this code would actually work even if we coded this out, if we commented it out, but I'm gonna leave it just in case and I think it, it makes the code a bit more legible. Uh, I'm gonna create some sort of result variable, which will be zero, and a total speed variable, which I mentioned, which will also be zero. And then we want to create an array. And, and this array is going to be the combination of the, the speeds and efficiencies for every step. What we can do for this is some sort of list concatenation. And, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I'll take efficiency and I'll take speed for, for every ith element. And we'll say that for i in the range uh, in the length of either speed or efficiency. So they're going to be the same length. We can see that in the constraints. And, and just logically speaking, we're always going to be given a, a valid input. So we have a total of i steps any which way you do this. You could switch the speed and the efficiency. Um, I did, just did it this way for, for no particular reason, really. Makes no difference. And, and then we're gonna wanna sort this. So we're gonna wanna sort it in descending order. Uh, one thing that you can do is you can just sort it and say reverse equals true. Uh, if you do this with the, so your elements in the, in the array list are, it's a nested array. So it will by default sort it in descending order by this, by the first element of each subarray. Um, if you'd like, if you prefer to do a lambda sort, we can say key is equal to lambda x, and we're going to sort in descending order by the first entry. Um, you could do it this way, so if maybe you implemented it speed being before efficiency here, then, then this would be uh, lambda of, of one, for instance. Again, it really makes no difference, uh, whatever floats your boat. I'm now going to, to somehow iterate through this array, and in the end, I'm going to want to return this result. Note also that they, they tell us that the result could be really big, so we're going to want to return the result modulus uh, 10 to the 9 plus 7. So I'm going to return result mod uh, 10 to the power of 9 plus 7. Some of you may prefer to create a global variable here. It maybe even if it's not global, even if it's just in the method, uh, something called mod, which is equal to 10 to the power of 9 plus 7. Oops. And, and that could just work as a constant. What am I doing here? Oh boy. Uh, that could work as a constant if you prefer, I think I deleted that. Uh, and then you can just modulus that, that mod variable here. Again, completely up to you and, and whatever your style is. Now, I'm going to begin by iterating through this array and, and I'm gonna grab every single speed and efficiency. Uh, I'm gonna call them kind of F for efficiency and, and SP for, for speed. 
Um, you could call them ENS. I think these are a tiny bit more descriptive for what it's worth, but again, personal choice. And, and so what we're going to do at every step along the way is we're going to add this item to our, to our heap and we're going to increase the total speed. So I'm going to say heap push, uh, and we're going to do it into the heap, and we're going to push the speed in. We're also going to take total speed and add the current speed that we're looking at. Then what we said was we, since we can only have up to k elements, if we get to the point where we, we reach more than k elements, we need to pop the smallest number off the array and reduce it from our total speed because we're not going to be using that number anymore for our speed calculation. So we'll say if the size of the heap is greater than k, what we'll do is we're going to reduce our total speed. So total speed is going to be reduced by heap pop from, from the heap. Um, again, you can, if you want, you can do like min speed equals heap pop of heap and then you know re reduce that from here. I'm doing it in one line here, personal preference once again. And, and really that's gonna be it. That, that's actually all the code that's involved in this. I'm, I'm gonna click run really quickly. Um, clearly, okay, I, I messed something up here and, and I don't know what I did. Uh, what I did actually was I believe I forgot to update my result. So I lied, it's not the only code we need. We do need to say that result is gonna be the maximum of the result that we've had so far, uh, as well as the total speed times the current efficiency that we're at, okay? So this is this last step right over here. Where, where we're saying, all right, let me grab the total speed up to this point or the maximum speed that I could have had up to this point and multiply it by my current efficiency. If that is greater than the previous best result we had, then update result. Otherwise, leave it as it is. That's what this max function does. And finally, that will get us over the line. Uh, we, so we used a lot more memory here than when I did this in my trial run for whatever reason. Again, this number will, it, it'll, It'll, it'll fluctuate. It might be because I'm importing up here that it's taking up a bit of space, but either way, the, the space complexity of the solution will be O of N because we are creating this array. Um, the, the heap itself will be O of K. The additions to the heap will be log of K for every single entry we put in uh, when we're doing the heap push. And over N entries, we'll have N log K time complexity there. But again, the, the dominant time complexity here will be based on, sorry, not there, on here, when we're when we're sorting n elements, so it'll be an in, in n log n sort. Potentially, potentially you could improve this to an O of n time if you use something like a radix sort. Since we are sorting integers here, um, you could get a bit clever there and implement that. And so, something that's worth mentioning, maybe in an interview you won't have time to to implement that an in integer sort from scratch. But like I said, worth mentioning as, as a possible improvement. So I hope you guys found this useful. Hope you found it informative. Let me know down below if you have any questions. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.